Hello everybody. So today we'll be doing a lesson on the topic structure of nephron, and it's presented by me, Iftikhar Khan, and it's part of the collection on the excretory system. So you can follow me on UN Academy at www.unacademy.in/user/iftikharkhan. So that's about me. So let's get started. Firstly, I like to ask you, what a nephron is. The nephron or a uriniferous tubule is basically the structural and functional unit of kidney. The structural and functional unit of kidney. So, it's basically all these nephrons which. Combined together and help in the in the help the kidney in forming the urine. So these are the basic uh, basic structures that are involved in the formation of urine. The two kidneys, the two human kidneys, contain about a million of these nephrons, million of these structures. So this is the structure of a nephron. This is a picture of the nephron. So let me see what are the parts of it. L Firstly, uh, this red part, this red colored part, is basically a tuft of capillaries called as glomerulus. It has two limbs: the ascending afferent arteriole and the efferent arteriole. So, this is the part of the kidney. It's the afferent arteriole is the part of the renal artery. It it does come from the renal artery. and the efferent arteriole further divides into peritubular capillaries these red structure these are called the peritubular capillaries so the thing is that one more important thing that the afferent arteriole diameter is larger than the efferent arteriole diameter because it helps in the formation of the urine by the process of ultrafiltration it helps in the formation of glomerular filtrate So the structure near to the glomerular filtrate is the Bowman's capsule. The Bowman's capsule is a two-layered structure having a visceral layer and a parietal layer. The visceral layer is consisting of specific and special epithelial cells known as the podocytes which help in the formation of the slit pore or the filtration slit. Uh, while the parietal layer is com is composed of normal simple squamous epithelium uh it follows into the proximal convoluted tubule proximal means near convoluted means rounded or it's not straight it's loopy right and tubule means a small tube it further continues into the loop of henle which has two limbs the descending limb of loop of henle and the ascending limb of loop of henle both these limbs have a different function and we'll discuss it later then we have the distal convoluted tubule which means distal means farther away from the center or farther away from the glomerulus and the bowman's capsule which together are called as malpighian corpuscle so the distal convoluted tubule continues many distal convoluted tubule continue into a single collecting duct and many sing and many collecting ducts continue into the duct of bellini i have not mentioned it here it's called the duct of bellini so as you can see a straight straight vessel called as vasa recta also in this in this diagram this is called the vasa recta this is very important in the concentration of urine and maintaining a particular osmotic gradient as we go from cortex towards the medulla one another thing to keep in mind is that cortex contains the malpighian corpuscle the proximal convoluted tubule and distal convoluted tubule while a part of the loop of henle is it is present inside the medulla and also the collecting ducts are present inside the medulla So let's take a part let's take a look at the parts of the uriniferous tubule 
so basically it has two major part one is the malpighian corpuscle and the other part is the tubular part the tubular part so first we'll discuss about the malpighian corpuscle i have discussed most of it it's the tuft of capillaries having afferent and efferent arteriole that i have told you afferent means coming in and efferent means going out the bowman's capsule has two layers which i told you the parietal layer and the visceral layer visceral layer is made up of podocytes which has specific branches called the pedicels pedicels podo means pod means anything a limb and sites means cells so limb means the pedicels are the extensions which look like limbs or feet so this is basically a diagram of the malpighian body of the malpighian corpuscle so this is the afferent arteriole the efferent arteriole and this is the bowman's capsule and it contains into the proximal convoluted tubule now we continue to the tubular part so in the tubular part we can see that uh, i told you about the proximal convoluted tubule one thing to keep in mind is that the proximal convoluted tubule has a brush bordered cuboidal epithelium which is specified for reabsorption tubular reabsorption and has a lot of mitochondria and other energy giving energy sources so that it can actively secrete and can take part in tubular secretion as well while the loop of henle the henle's loop it has two parts the ascending loop and the descending loop and it's very important in the fact that um uh, you can have you can take it as a concentrate like the descending loop the descending loop is basically the concentrating limb while the ascending limb is the diluting limb we'll discuss in it in detail in the further in the further lectures the further lessons then we have the distal convoluted tubule where conditional reabsorption takes place and it's very important as it helps in concentrating the urine even further or diluting the urine even further while there is the collecting ducts as i told you then we have the vasa recta vasa recta means vasa means vessel and recta means straight so it's basically a vessel which is in a hairpin loop in a, in a, in the shape of a hairpin loop and helps in concentration of urine the sluggish it has a sluggish blood flow and it's in close proximity with the henle's loop as it helps in the counter current mechanism which we'll discuss further in the lesson so there are two types of nephrons basically one is the cortical nephron and it's the other is the juxta medullary nephron the cortical nephrons are the nephrons which are the more common of the two have at 85% and what does the mean cortical nephron mean the term cortical means relating to the cortex and as i told you the outer part of the kidney is called the renal cortex so these nephrons are short, have a shorter loop of henle and and they are so smaller in size as a whole they are mostly in the cortical region only and a very small part a very small fraction of the loop of henle extends inside the medulla the work under the normal conditions the vasa recta is absent and they do not secrete renin they are, they do not secrete renin the juxta glomerular apparatus is absent in them so these are the most important for points about these while the differences is that the extremity are relatively larger in size and a large part of the vasa recta the long vasa recta is present and the loop of henle is also very long it's longer as compared it's longer as compared to the cortical nephrons and the juxta glomerular apparatus forms renin which was absent in the case of the cortical nephron it was absent so this will be it for the lecture thank you guys thank you so much for listening to me bye bye have a great day